Across the western plain As the white man journeyed westward To the land of the Indian A new race was created A new nation rose up strong Hardship as its destiny And its curse to not be long in the land from which they came, in the land that he helped to build, they found themselves the alien, found their vision unfulfilled. And despite their valiant efforts to defend what they believed, when at last the battle ended, they were only left to grieve. We are proud to be mighty, watch a nation rise again, and never more forgotten people with the true Canadians. And for the newest generation and the future ones to come, with the past to motivate us, it will help to keep us strong. And as we build this mighty nation, as we watch it rise again, our past lost its motivation to inspire our future gain. We are proud to be mighty, watch a nation rise again, and never more forgotten people with a true Canadian. 
And we are proud to be Mainty. Watch a nation rise again and never more forgotten people with the true Canadians. Welcome to the Bedford Road Collegiate Virtual Graduation Ceremony. My name is Scott Ferguson and I'm the proud principal of Bedford Road Collegiate. It is my pleasure to speak to you on behalf of the Bedford Road community. Thank you for joining me to honour the graduates of our wonderful school. Despite the challenges of this school year, it is with honour and pleasure that I bring remarks to you this afternoon. As we begin, it is important to acknowledge that Bedford Road is located on Treaty 6 territory and the traditional homeland of the Métis people. I would like to welcome our honoured guests. First, I would like to welcome our school trustee, Mr. Vernon Linklater, and our superintendent of schools, Mr. Dean Newton. I would also like to welcome the families of our graduates, our school staff, and of course, most important of all, I welcome you, the graduating class of 2021. You have accomplished a great deal in order to be with us today. Many of you have been presented with a more challenging path to complete your grade 12 than other students. You have graduated now because you have been supported by family or friends. Many of you have made significant connections with one or more of our dedicated staff members and all of you have demonstrated absolute determination to accomplish your goals. As we can't come together today, it is important for us to acknowledge the community that surrounds you and provides support for your growth. Thank you to the families and caregivers that have encouraged you and pushed you to be your best. Thanks to the wonderful staff members who have provided support as a teacher, educational assistant, coach, counselor, advocate or advisor. We've enjoyed every moment and we hope to, to have contributed in some way uh, to your current and ongoing success. What will be required of you in the future? Our world is growing less predictable. Who would have thought that our graduation ceremony would be broadcast in this way? What we know about the future is that the skills you have demonstrated in your pursuit of your goals at Bedford Road will be essential. You may pursue a job in technology, healthcare, or even education. What will make you successful there? Effort, resilience, openness, and a collaborative spirit. Please remember that a sustainable future employment is made easier if you love what you do. One aside on that, however, most of the video game tester and ice cream taster jobs have already been taken. On a more serious note, whatever motivated you to succeed in your studies is likely what will make you successful in your future education or employment. You have proven that you can overcome challenges that you have faced in completing your uh, secondary education. You have demonstrated a growth mindset and a strong work ethic. I am confident that this group of students will move forward to become, become an important part of the fabric of our community and our world. As our greater society struggles with valid and substantial questions regarding equity, fairness, and who we really are, I think it makes sense that some of our future leaders, some of you, haven't always taken the easy path. You have the opportunity to make a real difference in the world that your children and their children will inhabit for decades to come. On behalf of your teachers and staff, I would like to congratulate you all on your achievement. We are very proud of each of our graduating students and wish you all the best in whatever you choose to conquer next. We are honoured that we have been able to walk side by side with you during your time with us. Bedford Road is a better place because of you and your time spent here. Thank you.
Hello, I'm Colleen McPherson, trustee for Ward 5 and chair of the board for Saskatoon Public Schools. Each year at graduation ceremonies, a trustee from the Board of Education presents three of the top awards at high school graduation. The Governor General's Medal, the Perseverance Award, and the School Board Proficiency Scholarship. This year, because of restrictions, I'm here to speak about the awards on behalf of my board colleagues. For almost 150 years, the Governor General's academic medals have recognized the outstanding scholastic achievement of students in Canada. Regarded as the nation's most prestigious student award, the medal recognizes the student graduating with the highest average from a high school, approved college, or university program. The Perseverance Award, given by the Board of Education, recognizes a student who has overcome significant obstacles and been able to succeed despite the challenges they faced. This award of $1,000 is to be put toward future endeavors. With the Proficiency Scholarship, Saskatoon Public Schools recognizes the top student in each grade with a cash award to be held in trust until they graduate. The top student in grade 12 receives a $1,500 award. The winners of the Governor General's Medal, Perseverance Award and Proficiency Scholarship will be announced on June 25th. On behalf of all of my colleagues and indeed the entire Saskatoon Public School Division, congratulations to this year's recipients. And congratulations to all Saskatoon Public School graduates. We share your pride in this accomplishment and we wish you all the best in the future. Hi, my name is Brittany McFadden and I'm presenting the Female Athlete of the Year Award. This award is given to a grade 12 student athlete who best exemplifies the following criteria. Character and conduct on and off the playing field, athletic performance, sportsmanship and physical education, and number of sports played. I'm pleased to present this year's Female Athlete of the Year to Emily Newdorf and Carly Radke. Emily participated on both the senior basketball and volleyball teams since grade 10. She is a talented athlete who continually pushes herself to develop her skills and grow as a player and as a teammate. Emily naturally took on a leadership role on her teams. In speaking with her volleyball coach, Ms. Humbert, she shared the following. Emily was a member of the senior volleyball team in grades 10 and 11. She made an immediate impact starting all games in her grade 10 year. Health challenges in grade 11 left her sidelined for the second half of the season, but she remained an incredible team member and supported her teammates from the bench. If we had the opportunity to play this year, Emily would have been in contention for the most valuable player. I was fortunate to coach Emily last year on the senior basketball team, where she received the most valuable player award for her grade 11 season. Emily is one of those athletes who really love to coach because they're eager to learn and improve. Emily has so many natural skills as an athlete, but she was driven to keep improving and be even better. Emily contributed greatly to our team and was a big part of our team's growth and achievements. On the court, Emily demonstrated great sportsmanship as she respected not only her teammates, but also her opponents. Our basketball team did not see a high number of games won throughout our season. Some athletes would quit or give up with these results. For Emily, it fueled her drive. She showed up, practiced hard, and played even harder. With pure grit and perseverance, Emily became the strongest player on the court and never let up her commitment to her team as they battled hard together each game. One of Emily's counterparts on the basketball court and co-captain was Carly. Carly and Emily brought an energy to the team that was unique to them. Their fun and lighthearted personalities created an inclusive and accepting space for their teammates. These two were a dynamic duo on and off the court. Feeding off each other's energy, they energized and motivated our entire team. Even when they may have been struggling personally or having a bad game, these two were true captains and put the team above themselves. They channeled their energy to their teammates and focused on building each other up. Carly joined the senior basketball team in grade 10 and received the Red Hawk Pride Award in her grade 11 season. In grade 9 and 10, she played junior volleyball, and then in grade 11, she joined Bedford's senior football team, where she made a great impact. I spoke with Coach Anderchuk, and he said the following about Carly. As a grade 11, 
Carly played an essential role on the Red Hawks senior football team as the starting left tackle. Carly helped to anchor the offensive line, creating holes for our running game and protecting the quarterback's blind side. Carly never missed a single snap throughout the season, which, in a physically demanding sport such as football, is a testament to her determination and toughness. Due to the pandemic, Carly was unable to participate in her senior year on the football field. But we know that Carly would have continued her success as a talented and reliable player, and her leadership as a team captain would have surely inspired her teammates to be the best they could be. I am so glad I had the opportunity to coach Carly last year on the senior basketball team. She brought such a happy and positive energy to our team. But underneath her big smile was a fierce competitor. Carly was committed to her development as a player and often even found shooting before school or at lunch. She was self-motivated to improve and spent extra time on her own working on her skills. Carly has a great work ethic. Her commitment to the team and her own development allowed her to be a valuable player for us. Once Carly got the ball in the paint, she was pretty hard to be stopped. As a post player, they're exposed to a very physical game, often getting pushed around and thrown elbows when the refs aren't looking. Carly took this in stride. She never let it affect her sportsmanship on the court and continued to battle hard. This takes a great deal of composure as an athlete, which Carly just demonstrated game after game. In addition to her impact on the court, Carly is a great teammate. She was aware of when her teammates were struggling and was there to support and encourage them through it. Positivity, commitment, and strong work ethic are characteristics that suit both of the recipients of this award. I was so disappointed we were unable to have a season this year. The main reason for this is I wanted Carly and Emily and their fellow grade 12 teammates to finish off the high school year with a great season. Our team was almost unrecognizable by the end of the season last year because of how much each player improved. Carly and Emily truly were a force to be reckoned with on the court, and I know they would have continued to excel this year. I am grateful for the opportunity to have coached you both. Congratulations, Emily and Carly, and I wish you all the best. My name is Eric Day, and it is my honor today to present the 2021 Graduating After the Year Award to Amon Kong. Um, from the moment Amon walked into the Bedford Road, he instantly became a leader and a role model. He has a certain gravity to him that just naturally causes people to come towards him, to look up to him, and really try to emulate all of the things he does. Um, although Amon's got so many amazing athletic gifts, it's truly his humility and his focus on helping others and helping the team that really stood out to me and really made me so appreciative of being able to be a coach of his and so have so much admiration for the person he's becoming. Throughout your time at Bedford Road, you were able to show off your amazing athleticism with some great crossovers on the basketball court, amazing spikes during volleyball games, breaking tackles on the football field, sprinting by people on the track court, and even occasionally attempting to high jump over the badminton nets in grade nine. Enough said. Um, it was truly amazing being able to watch and see you grow over the years. And I had the privilege of coaching you from grade nine um, until the end of your high school career in basketball. I know there's a few junior coaches that weren't very happy when I stole you to the senior team in grade nine, but I saw right away that you had an impact person and someone I really, really wanted to be a part of their uh, high school journey. And couldn't I couldn't consider myself more lucky for having that opportunity. Uh, and getting the speech ready, I was able to talk to a few other Rosamond's coaches and they all had very strong words. And these are some of the things that your other coaches said. Amon is a unique in the way he balances an unwavering sense of humility while still maintaining the utmost confidence in his ability. Amon carries himself with a thoughtfulness beyond his years and truly understands the dedication it takes both on and off the field or court to be truly excellent. There is no doubt that Amon is a great athlete. However, as great of an athlete as Amon is, he is a better human being. That quote, that quote was from Coach Wager. Oh, this quote is going to be from Mr. Lockwood, Coach Lockwood. Amon always spoke with maturity and caring beyond his years. He would talk to me about my work, about my kids, about my school, and he'd always be interested and made me feel welcomed being his coach. His basketball skills were next to none on the basketball court, 
but Amon was always focused on showing what he could do to be able to make the team better. That was always his first question. How can I help the team? How can I make it so we can win? What can I do to help the other guys? Whatever we asked him to do, he always rose to the occasion, worked harder than anyone else on the court, and be, that was able to lead us to many victories. Amon is a coach's dream and a perfect teammate. Those again were words from Coach Lockwood. When I started writing the speech, it was some of those similar sentiments that stood out to me. As amazing as you've been on the court, it's the impact on those around you that always stood out to me. Um, whether we were in a tight competition and trying to win a basketball game down the stretch, whenever we got to the huddle, it was never about, I wanna get my shot, I wanna give me the ball, give me the opportunity. It was like, what can we do to help ourselves? As well, one of the really unique things about Amon was just he has a very keen sensitivity to how others feel around him and how truly he wants to impact those. He was very aware when another player needed a hand, whether it was physically picking someone up or whether it was just a kind word to encourage them to be better. Uh, throughout your entire high school career, you always strove to do better, but you always tried to make those around you better. And for me, that's truly what a great athlete is, making sure he has a positive impact on all of those around you. Um, it's gonna be really sad for me to see you go. Obviously, we didn't get to finish all of the things we'd set out for this year. Um, but I, I couldn't be more proud of who you are and what you've accomplished here at Bedford Road. Um, you're truly one of the greatest Red Hawks that we've seen come through here in all sports disciplines. Um, literally no teacher, no coach, no student has ever said a negative word about you. And that, that goes to show just how much you care about doing things the right way, putting in that extra work and making sure all those around you feel that positive energy. Um, I'm happy to see you go. Um, I can't wait to see what you're going to do on the next level. Um, Amon Khan, you were the 2021 graduating athlete of the year. Um, and as great of an athlete you are, I know I'm talking to everyone around the building and from me getting to know you are a much, much better person. But congratulations on this award. We can't wait to see what you do next. And yeah, everyone put your hands together for the 2021 athlete of the year, Amon Khan. Hello, Platform Party guests and graduates. My name is Lisa Ani, and as Music Director of Bedford Road Collegiate, it is my pleasure to present the Brian Hartsook Band Trophy to two deserving students, Dawson Puderak and Prachi Shrestha. Dawson and Prachi have been dedicated members of our music program for the past four years, at a time when many have been disheartened at not being able to play together, including myself. These two have continued to play and grow as musicians, challenging themselves and others to look for ways to make music with others. Back when rehearsing and performing together was still possible, each of them brought something different and yet equally inspiring, inspiring to our music making. Dawson is our rock. You can throw anything at this guy and he will not falter. He came to rehearsals so well prepared that I swear his eyes never left mine when I was conducting. In fact, I remember saying once that if Dawson and I were in ever in different places in the music, that people should follow Dawson. I've never said that in 27 years of conducting. That's how much we could all trust him. He's dedicated to his dance community, excellence in his studies, and he worked really hard in the IB program, and yet he still made time for the pit orchestra with our musicals. We have been fortunate to have his passion, his ideas, and his drive motivating us for the past four years. If Dawson was the steady push for behind, Prachi is the Pied Piper. I don't know how many times she came to rehearsals with her parts so well rehearsed that students actually gasped when they heard her playing. She is a kind and generous spirit and she inspired others to make music instead of just playing the notes on the page. I remember the first time Prachi played with the pit orchestra. Her eyes lit up and I saw her realize that she was exactly where she belongs. It was pure joy. We all know that it's not just her talent. I mean, she is very talented, but she works hard. And by doing so, she makes the rest of us want to work harder too. It seems like a long time ago already, but I remember Dawson and Prachi and their conversations every day after rehearsals. Sometimes it was about the music, sometimes it was about politics, but always their conversations were fascinating. They problem solved, they inspired those around them, and they made me want to be the best teacher and musician I could be. Congratulations on winning this award, Dawson and Prachi. 
We will miss your dedication and leadership, but we know you'll bring those qualities to the next group of lucky people you get to work with. Good luck next time. My name is Kim Buglis, and I'm a proud teacher here at Bedford Road and the International Baccalaureate Coordinator, and I'm happy to be presenting another award today. The IB Learner Profile Award is presented to the IB graduate who best exemplifies the 10 attributes of the IB Learner Profile at the heart of all IB World schools. The IB Learner strives to be an inquirer, a thinker, a communicator, principled, knowledgeable, open-minded, caring, a risk taker, balanced and reflective. The attributes imply a commitment to participate in the betterment of our school community, plus respect for self, others and the world. On behalf of the IB faculty, I am most pleased to present this year's recipient of the IB Learner Profile to IB Diploma graduate, Sohila El Jadawi. I met Sohila when she was in grade 10. She presented as a bubbly bundle of nerves, but reflecting back on our time together these past three years, I would say instead of nerves, she was oozing enthusiasm and anticipation. She wholeheartedly embraced the IB mantras, when do we panic? Never. And there's a solution to every problem. Even though the pandemic challenged us and my mantras on every level, over time, Sohila developed into the self-assured, dedicated to self, community and worldly young, young person we see before us. Suhila exemplifies the attributes of our Ivy Learner profile in her approach, not only to her studies, but especially to her community and through her school endeavors. Suhila is also a prolific writer. Taking the risk to submit her work for publication, she is not only twice published in Wind Script, but she won the Jared Enns Award, recognizing excellence for high school student writing in poetry and prose. This award is about character. Ms. Walling, Ms. Humbert, and Bethany from the YMCA's Youth Action Network characterize Suhila as someone willing to step in and step up. She takes initiative, leads, and makes many important contributions. Her efforts on the SRC, her leadership during Fit Females, and her tenure with the YCAN crew pre and during pandemic conditions plus her other activities, including badminton, the Food Bank Garden Patch, Saskatoon Public Schools Foundation's Summer Reading Camp, etc. All of these activities and comments from her supervisors left this common impression, and I quote, what an amazing young woman, end quote. So he lists, uh, cast journal cites over and over about the power of team the importance of listening and that sometimes leadership means stepping back into the shadows but always remaining supportive. This class has many worthy candidates for this award but this year the IB faculty feels that the 10 attributes grew with you and through you during your IB journey Sohila. Many heartfelt congratulations on this award. Hello my name is Terian Walling and I'm an English and science teacher here at Bedford Road. I'm also an SRC advisor Today, I have the pleasure of presenting the Spirit of Bedford Award. The Spirit of Bedford Award is awarded to a grade 12 student who has attended Bedford Road for at least two years and who, without being asked, was always there to put in extra time and effort into a variety of extracurricular activities. This individual demonstrated exemplary leadership, academic achievement, and contributed greatly to the life at BRCI. Congratulations, Jislene Chandy. No one deserves the award more than you do. And it really is a great honor for me to be the one that presents it to you today. Teachers who were involved with Jesleen during her time in senior and junior volleyball said that she was a strong member of the team and a leader through her positive interactions with teammates and her constant desire to improve her own skills. Jesleen was also on the Palm team and a Brit hostess. She always entered into each activity experience with a kind of heart and dedication to work ethic. Jesleen was also a part of the International Baccalaureate program. While I did not teach Jesleen academically, her IB teachers have said that she is a committed, an engaged, thoughtful, and balanced student. She has been such an important member of the IB and Bedford Road community due to the positive and humble approach she takes in her academic studies. While she values success and achievement, she is also genuine about her learning and displays the wisdom required to respect the balance between her personal needs and those of the shared learning community. And for these reasons, and for her constantly pleasant and fun-loving presence in class, Jeslene is a role model and a deserving recipient of this award. Jeslene has been involved in SRC since grade nine. 
She's contributed greatly to the spirit of the school, whether it was selling pizza at Pita Ford Friday or planning events for events week, she always took the initiative to get the ball rolling. The last year has been a challenge for all of us, but the SRC took on the incredible job of keeping the spirit alive at Bedford. There wasn't a week and sometimes a day that went by that Jisling wasn't creating ideas for how to keep the students engaged. She'd come up with an idea and she'd excitedly message me saying, what do you think? Jesleen did all these things without any expectations of praise, and she worked behind the scenes to ensure that the school was the best it could be uh, for Bedford Road this year. And I have told her many times, and I'm going to say it again, I'm so proud of you, Jesleen, for your hard work and your dedication to SRC. Your spirit shows through, and I cannot wait to hear about all the great things you do in the future. A huge congratulations again. You really, really deserve this award. Hello, graduates, families, and staff. I am Kim Long and I am a teacher here at Bedford Road Collegiate. It is my pleasure today to announce the winner of the Marion Hammersley Award. This year, the recipient is Callie LaFont. The Marion Hammersley Award is awarded to a grade 12 female graduate who has been at Bedford for more than two years and contributed to the social and cultural life of the school. Marion Hammersley herself is remembered to have a pleasant smile, gentle manner, academic achievement, and her commitment to Bedford Road. Callie has exemplified this award. Teachers who have had the privilege to know Callie have expressed their respect and love. Miss Tate said, Callie is the definition of this award. Marion Hammersley was remembered for her pleasant smile, gentle demeanor, and her commitment to BRCI. Callie LaFond embodies everything this award represents. Callie is a gentle soul and has always a kind word to support her peers. Callie was a dependable member of the SRC and the Indigenous Student Council. She could always be counted on to get things done and was willing to volunteer for tasks. Often when someone needed to get done, something needed to be get done, Callie would be the one who would be shoulder tapped as she could be trusted and would get things done. Never one to complain, Callie took on task after task and would deliver a polished result. She passionately committed herself to extracurricular activities. Callie, I have had the privilege of teaching you since grade nine and have loved every minute of it. You are a kind soul. You are there for others and you will support anyone um, in so many different ways. Throughout the years, I've seen you support your peers and are just a kind, loving, sweet smiled soul. Callie, as you leave us at Bedford, I wish you success in whatever you choose to do. Also, please remember, for those of us left here, uh, we will always, always cherish and remember you because of the impression you made. Um, you have been an outstanding member of Bedford Road Collegiate, and we will miss you next year, but congratulations for winning the Mary Hi graduates! I get the super sweet gig this year of presenting the Victor Lowen Award to Muhammad Iqbal. Victor Lowen is remembered for his strength, his good spirit, his cheerful nature, and concern for others. It's an award that's always given to a male student who's contributed the most to the social and cultural life of our school. And I think that here, Mo perfectly exemplifies that. I met Mo two years ago, coaching him on the boys' soccer team, and while he might have been one of the smallest kids on the field, he really was one that left one of the biggest impressions. He was a very committed, dedicated player, and he was always very encouraging and supportive of, of his teammates. Mr. Knutson also coached him on the boys' basketball team, and he echoed that same sentiment, saying that what Mo might have lacked on, in size on the court, he made up for in his heart and in his tenacity. Now this gusto for life follows Mo in absolutely everything he does. Mo was chosen as one of the SRC student leaders by a landslide because he's so personable and frankly, likable. Uh, he has been a strong leader in this role and he supported his peers as well, often working behind the scenes, uh, making sure people are sharing their ideas and working towards events. And if you've ever been to one of our pep rallies in the past, you know the kind of life and energy he can bring to those things and how he has a way of bringing the whole school together and uniting them. Mo loves this school and he's a true ambassador for our students. His warmth and joy are contagious and integral to the school community. Now Mo is also graduating with an IB diploma so I also had the pleasure of teaching him IB chemistry. And he's a great student, he asks really good questions, but what I remember most is his cheerful nature 
and his knack for cracking a joke to ease tensions when everyone was stressed out about exams. It's clear that he cares about his classmates and he will definitely be missed around the school. So Mo, congratulations on being this year's Victor Lowen Award winner and good luck next year. My name is Kim Biglis and I'm a teacher and international baccalaureate coordinator at Bedford Road Collegiate. It gives me great pleasure to be presenting the award today at graduation. The General Proficiency Award is awarded to the top grade 12 student in the graduating class. It is based on regularity of attendance, attitude to work, leadership, athletics, ability to cooperate, public speaking ability, community service and academic performance. I am honored to present this award to the very deserving Dawson Kuderak. Dawson is one of the most talented individuals I've met who has zero ego, rare and precious. His teachers and activity supervisors are unanimous. We marvel at his approach to complex chemistry problems, his higher level essay process and his drive for excellence. Despite the pandemic realities, as Ms. Ani puts it, Dawson never skipped a beat. Dawson is a decorated IB diploma student who has excelled in all of the subject areas. The classroom is only one source of Dawson's musings, however. He's able to integrate his experiences and see important connections. In his creativity, activity, and service journal, his insights were a gift into his mind. While reflecting on his concert band experiences, Dawson recognized that music serves different societies in similar ways. He was equally fascinated by the challenge of musical theory and how the technicalities contribute to meaning. Dawson is not only skilled in academics, as noted, he is a multi-talented musician who contributed to the pit band during two musicals. He's a computer scientist with a personal passion for coding. He didn't just lead the coding club with the peer, they also offered classes to elementary school students even after the pandemic shut down schools. He's a debate champion, a dancer and a mentor. His dance instructor has this to say about Dawson. He is respectful, honest, polite, punctual, committed, and hardworking. Dawson remained optimistic during the shutdown. He believed literally that the dance must go on. He pushed through dancing in boxes designed for social distancing. And recently, I'm happy to report with fewer restrictions, but some creative modifications, he participated in a music video. Dawson operates on a level reserved for a few, but he's always equally focused on the success of his peers as well. As a result, Dawson is a natural fit for this year's General Proficiency Award. Congratulations. Hello, graduates, parents, colleagues, and guests. I'm honored to introduce the Julie Salmon Memorial Scholarship, which was created in 2017 in honor of longtime employee of Saskatoon Public Schools, Julie Salmon. I got to know Julie Salmon when I was hired as a teacher at Bedford Road way back in 2011. And as a new teacher, I had lots of questions. Questions like, how much money can I spend on anything? Um, where's the photocopier? How does it work? Uh, where's the form I need to take students places? Where is the staples? Where's the bathroom? Why didn't I get any training when I started this job? You know, they just give you the keys and you figure it out. And it didn't take me long to figure out that there was only one place I needed to go for answers. And that was the desk of our head secretary, Julie Salmon. And uh, not only did she know the answers, she was often the only person that knew the answers because she was the boss. She ran the show four and a half years there and she was so competent and so kind and even though I speak only about her excellence as an employee it is her kindness that is her legacy she passed away in 2016 and we miss her in her honor there is now the Julie Salmon Memorial Scholarship which includes a $400 educational investment the recipient must have attended Bedford Road for at least two years and have plans to attend a trades, business college, or workplace post-secondary institution. This year's deserving recipient is Delilah Robles. Delilah will be attending Saskatchewan Polytechnic's Early Childhood Education Program. Delilah, we believe that this is a terrifically matched career path for you and your demeanor and your talents, and we wish you the very best. Congratulations, Delilah. Hello friends and family of Bedford Road Collegiate. My name is Mr. Aaron Knutson and I'm presenting the Stiller Award Scholarship 
in the amount of $500. The Stiller Scholarship is awarded to a grade 12 student who has performed above and beyond expectation in leadership, seizing the opportunity, taking initiative, self-directed accomplishment, and consideration of others. This scholarship is awarded to someone who intends to pursue post-secondary education and who meets grad requirements with an average of 70% or better in the compulsory and five highest optional subjects. The winner of this award goes to Caleb Whittingstall. When Caleb first attended Bedford Road Collegiate as a young, thoughtful grade nine student, I had the pleasure of teaching Caleb in Phys Ed 9 and Health 9. We would start off every health class with a quote, and students responded to the prompts regarding the quote, and from there, all sorts of discussions and learning opportunities arose. You know, right from the beginning, Caleb demonstrated an open mind, you know, an empathetic ear as he listened to his classmates' responses, and the characteristics of a lifelong learner, as Caleb would oftentimes pose deeper reflective questions for the whole class. This was the first glimpse at Caleb's quiet leadership, his consideration for others, and his self-directed growth. As the years passed, Caleb moved along his, his learning journey. We saw a youthful leader take initiative as a volunteer with the bike valet. Caleb's passion for the outdoors, for the cycling community, and for helping strangers became quite evident. Caleb would spend many hours of his precious, useful, useful years volunteering at community events where he would allow participants to store their bikes, kind of like a coat check system, just to help encourage people to bike to community events. Caleb then became involved with the Bridge City Bike Co-op, where he spent many, many hours removing bikes from the city landfill, repairing them, giving them back to community members that needed a bike. Caleb's passion for cycling grew from there. He started training as a cyclist. He would be seen cycling to school every day, rain, shine, snow, freezing, sleet, it didn't matter. Oftentimes he had a 20 pound bag of, of sand on the back of his bike just to add more resistance, to improve his skills and his strength and his endurance. And in the summer between grade 10 and 11, Caleb decided to challenge himself by biking all the way to Canmore, Alberta by himself. And he did this. He successfully biked all the way there and all the way back. You know, this just shows Caleb's initiative and his desire to continue to learn, take adventure and risks. And by, for his grade 11 year, Caleb enrolled in the outdoor school program. Caleb was finally able to connect his passions of learning in the outdoors. However, due to the pandemic, Caleb's experience was cut short by a few months. When I talked to Mitch Lowe, his outdoor ed school teacher, Mitch said that Caleb still returned months after the pandemic had closed down schools with his money, his fees for the class. Mitch had said, don't worry about it, Caleb. Your trips were canceled, your school's cut short. Caleb insisted that Mitch take the money, put it back into the program to help other students that may need it in the future. This just goes to show his compassion, his empathy, and his desire to help out others. And you know, most may not know this story and I hope Caleb's okay with me sharing this part of his journey, but this part of his story provides insight into the inspirational person he is. At the start of this school year, between training for cycling trial times, working, school, volunteering, Caleb started to feel increasingly exhausted and fatigued. He was in pain and struggling to figure out why. He tracked his food, his calorie intake, his exercise routine, sleep patterns, he did everything he could to try and figure out how to improve his situation. And after many, many appointments with doctors, Caleb found out in his grade 12 year that he had a hole in his heart. Caleb could no longer cycle, participate in rigorous activity, or do many of the things that brought him joy. But what's remarkable to think about is prior to knowing about all this, about having a hole in his heart, Caleb was performing incredibly well in his time trials for cycling. He was working many hours in his community, volunteering at the store, completing his schoolwork, all while taking half the amount of oxygen needed to fuel his body. But Caleb does not let this define who he is. Caleb continued to do everything he could, everything he was allowed to do, oftentimes pushing himself beyond what he should be doing. And soon, Caleb would be going to Alberta for open heart surgery. And I know, Caleb, that you'll have this whole Bedford Road family alongside you as you continue your journey of healing. Thank you for everything you've brought to the school. You're a gem. To reflect back four years ago to our health class when we would take on folks, I thought we'd finish off with one of your favorites. Love people and use things because the opposite never works. Congratulations, Caleb. 
Hi, my name is Brittany McFadden and I'll be presenting the BRC Alumni Scholarship. This is a $500 scholarship presented to two grade 12 students who are involved in school activities, achieved an average of 75% or higher, was a good citizen of Bedford, and is pursuing a post-secondary education. It's my pleasure to present the BRC Alumni Scholarship to Jasmine Roberts. Jasmine is an incredible young lady who has achieved a great deal over her time here at Bedford. With an overall GPA of 84.5, it's easy to acknowledge her great achievements within the classroom. Many of Jasmine's teachers have shared what an incredible student she is and how much they enjoy teaching her. Those who had the opportunity to teach Jasmine throughout her high school career will share how far she's come and how she's truly transformed as a student. They note that the grade 12 student sitting in their class has a newfound confidence and determination that will carry her on to do great things. This determination was also observed this year as Jasmine worked very hard to keep Bedford's Indigenous Student Council running as the school navigated a very difficult year during the pandemic. Jasmine has been on the Indigenous Student Council all throughout high school and took on a leadership role over the past few years when she visited the grade eight students of her old elementary school and talked to them about Bedford Road and joining us the following year. Jasmine is a quiet leader, but her presence is powerful. She is strong, determined, and resilient. During a year with many adversities, Jasmine was committed to her learning and was committed to being here at Bedford and being a positive presence within our school. I know I speak for so many of our staff when I say, Jasmine, I'm so proud of you and all that you've accomplished during your time here at Bedford. Your future is so bright. Congratulations. Warm greetings to our grads and everyone joining us on this special day. My name is Rochelle Broberg, and I'm proud to be a teacher here at Bedford Road Collegiate. I'm presenting the Bedford Road Alumni Scholarship Award. In the amount of $500, the Alumni Scholarship is awarded to a grade 12 student who was involved in school activities and earned a social B worth 80 activity points, an athletic B worth 80 points, or a merit B, a combination of social and athletics totaling 80 points. The recipient must have achieved an average of 75% or higher, was a good citizen of Bedford Road, and is pursuing post-secondary education. This year's recipient of this award demonstrates a combination of both athletic and social extracurricular involvement, is an outstanding citizen of our Bedford Road community, an engaged and successful student, and is pursuing further studies. I am pleased to announce that the recipient of the Class of 2021 Bedford Road Alumni Scholarship Award is Brianna Arthurs. Brianna has been an exceptional citizen at school and has definitely been involved in life at Bedford in a very significant way. She knows the meaning of determination and hard work, both inside and outside the classroom. She took part in our Palm Squad, Norwester's Club, Brit, and musical productions with commitment and optimism. Brianna has served as a Brit team hostess, spending countless hours organizing the tournaments, welcoming teams, and being a strong advocate of our school. I have had the opportunity to get to know Brianna through her extensive involvement in all of our musical productions. She has many gifts as a talented singer, musician, actress, dancer, and artist. These gifts are natural to her and she showcases them with unwavering positive energy and creativity. When not in the spotlight on the Bedford stage, Brianna leads quietly and by example. She's very supportive of others. She shows kindness to others um, with a very genuine spirit. Her spirit uplifts others and shines even through challenging situations. Simply put, Brianna is a good, beautiful person. Best wishes to Brianna as she plans to pursue her post-secondary education at the University of Saskatchewan College of Arts and Science in the study of criminology. <clears throat> I know she will further discover success as she is a conscientious student and has a love of learning and growing. On behalf of the Bedford family, Greetings Bedford Road administration, faculty, staff, parents, guardians, special guests, and fellow graduates of Bedford Road Collegiate Class of 2021. 
I would like to acknowledge that despite our remote approach, I speak to you from the home of the Red Hawks on Treaty 6 territory and the traditional homeland of the Métis. I know what most of you viewing must be wondering. Whose younger brother am I watching right now? Unfortunately, the high schoolers you see casted in high school TV shows like Riverdale and Footloose are usually older than the age of 30. My name is Mohammed Tamur Iqbal. I am an international baccalaureate diploma student and I am honored to represent our graduating class as Bedford Road Collegiate's valedictorian for 2021. Before I begin, I would like to thank my family, friends and the staff who encouraged me to run for valedictorian and I would also like to thank those who voted for me. I am glad to be a part of such a prestigious high school class. I am grateful that I get to represent a high school in my city where I was able to build relationships with the students and staff of this wonderful collegiate. I am honored that I was able to spend four years with such a brilliant group of seniors. It has been an experience that has allowed me to prepare myself for adulthood. I'm going to start by stating the obvious. I know what most of you must have felt when you received the email or heard that our graduation was going to be celebrated online. Disappointment. Honestly, even I was fairly emotional when I found out that our graduation is being celebrated in this virtual format. However, just as our parents like to over-exaggerate the conditions surrounding the high school lives, such as how they attended school during the Cold War, we'll be able to tell our children and our grandchildren that we, as a community, maintained our morale during the events of a global pandemic. Last year, we watched the breaking news report about a rumor that someone contracted the flu from eating a bat in Wuhan. Not too long later, we watched as this flu traveled to different nations on planes, and then it eventually reached Canada, shutting down schools and threatening the lives of many around the globe. We witnessed this small flu evolve into a global pandemic, and now, as vaccines are distributed, we'll watch as this horrific virus slowly diminishes from the globe. Red Hawks, I'm not going to spend your valuable graduation ceremony time reciting, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you could do for your country. As I'm sure every parent in attendance has heard one or two American presidential quotes since the day they graduated. And I'm sure the students in attendance need a break from curriculum content right now. I'm sure the seniors in attendance are familiar by now with how I prefer to structure my speeches. But I'm going to begin by reflecting on our time here at Bedford before I predict a successful future for each of us. Let me take you back in time on the magic school bus. After graduating elementary school in grade eight, some of us, including myself, were emotional to leave some friends we've known for eight plus years. And others were just glad that they completed a chapter of their life and could move on. For me personally, it was a mix of both. Although it was an emotional period, my peers and I talked about the wonderful opportunities high school could provide. Some of my friends only cared about getting their driver's license or prepping and preparing to blast Dancing Queen when they turned 17. For me personally, my dad's favorite group, pop group, is ABBA, and so I was tired of hearing Dancing Queen. It's all I ever listened to growing up. Sometime over the summer, some of us selected Bedford Road Collegiate as our destination, and others joined us later. For those who attended Bedford Road in the very first semester, September 2017, that's when our high school journey began. Although I was excited, Bedford Road was three times the size of my previous school and I felt overwhelmed at first. It was a whole new world, an unfamiliar setting. As I took the time to look around and understand the unfamiliar, all the different stories I heard and the welcoming atmosphere convinced me that this collegiate has a lot to offer. I remember Welcome Week, and it began with the freshy field games that included tug of war and the pudding eating contests. Then, we witnessed a freshy senior fashion show, followed by a day where we all got free ice cream. And then Thursday of that week, we experienced the Red Mile. It was a day where we could express our school spirit and watch our football team go and beat the Mount Royal Mustangs. At the end of that welcome week, we experienced our very first high school pep rally. Having all of these exciting events occur throughout the course of a week ensured me that I was at the right high school for me. 
As the year progressed, we became more and more involved with social media as high schoolers and we proceeded to follow Bedford Road's Instagram page. Through the Instagram page, we saw posts from our Student Representative Council regarding the clubs, sports and competitions. When it came to sports, my personal favorite was our spring soccer team. A portion of us also decided to commit to programs such as the SAGE and IB prep programs. Early January of that year, we experienced BRIT as players, participants, or even spectators. Our junior POM won silver medals, and our senior POM won their sixth consecutive triple SAD dance title. We also got the opportunity to take part in Norwesters, which was a highlight for a lot of people because it was the event when students and staff engaged in loads of activities such as canoeing, camping, and hiking together. I would have gone if I knew how to swim. Also, throughout our four years, Bedford Road hosted musicals that were so beautifully composed by the cast, crew, tech club, band club, and directors who put in a great amount of effort to deliver such spectacular shows every year. And then September 2018 happened, and we did it all again. We experienced our second Brit tournament, except that year, a lot of us began to go out of our way and took on the challenge of trying out for senior POM and sports teams. I want to acknowledge all who took on that challenge. This was the year where I began becoming more comfortable with the atmosphere, and so I decided to join the SRC and help plan the events and pep rallies aiming to really express the Red Hawk spirit around the school. In 2019, we became junior leaders in our high school. In our third year of high school, some of us turned 17, and then some of us, excluding myself, blasted, you are the dancing queen, young and sweet, only 17, and then unexpectedly on March 16th, we were told that we would get time off from school. I was particularly excited as I, was, I absolutely adored the idea of an extra long spring break, are you kidding me? Only, schools never reopened. And this pandemic going around affected the entire globe, forcing us to stay inside at home. Suddenly, the government was telling us to wear masks, stay six feet apart from each other, and constantly sanitize our hands. It was a very emotional and frightening situation. Our grade year 11 year had abruptly ended, and the grade 12 that year became the first graduates to host a virtual graduation due to this strangely named virus known as the coronavirus. We took the last portion of that year online using video calling software. I was surprised that we didn't use Skype as it has been around for our whole lives, but when we went with Zoom, I almost felt bad for Skype CEO. But in all honesty, online lectures are more challenging than in person, where we can interact with our peers and our teachers. But going online was definitely a necessary transition at that time. Sometime over the summer, in time for grade 12, we were given the opportunity to return to school while wearing masks, and we were also given the opportunity, more than ever before, to attend classes virtually. This year, however, we were able to hold co-presidential elections, and you guys voted for me and appear to direct events throughout the course of this difficult year. Unfortunately, most of my plans expressed during my election campaign didn't come to fruition due to the day one, day two schedule we transitioned to as a result of the uh, ongoing virus. Regardless, we were still able to have spirit days and miniature events and challenges like the Valentine's Day event and the Red Hawk Wellness Challenge. Whether those of you graduating are attending post-secondary education, going into the workforce, or taking the year off, I hope you all recognize that as seniors, we've worked so hard together to get here. And we can continue to work hard to build towards a successful future through optimistic and realistic mindsets. As graduates, we have a number of ways we can improve, and I believe the ability to improve is heavily dependent on the term togetherness. I believe that togetherness is a concept that is required when a goal is to be accomplished. Together as seniors and as a community, we were able to work through to get through a difficult, unexpected global pandemic. By following protocols set up by our hardworking staff and by playing our part by staying connected through online resources to gain education, we allowed ourselves to express this ideology of togetherness. In the future, with whomever you all may interact with down the line, Recall togetherness, as togetherness can serve as what resolves conflicts, achieves goals, and builds futures. I encourage you all to have faith and to continue to spend time at home strengthening your relationships with your families. Before I conclude, 
What on earth are stocks? No, seriously, some of my friends are marketing geniuses and are manipulating the stock market. What on earth is Dogecoin? Wasn't Doge what we all considered an outdated meme? Why is the world's richest man, Elon Musk, encouraging everyone to invest? And why is he on Saturday Night Live? Why are all of my friends so invested in stocks? Anyways, before I get too off track, I was told that every graduation ceremony ends with a quote. So I'll read one that I found after one Google search. Ask not what your community can do for you. Ask what you can do for your community. Although we haven't lived through the most untroubled high school experience, Assalamu alaikum class of 2021. In Arabic, this means may peace be upon you, class of 2021. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks to all of our staff who assisted with this presentation. I would like to once again congratulate the graduates of 2021. Be safe and take care. Go Red Hawks! <laughs>